type now. Uh, good evening, everyone. So it's the pleasant task of the International Society of ISM SICS Society uh, to have the Nigeria chapter today and also with uh, Sierra Leone. Uh, it's a pleasant task to uh, tell a few words about uh, Nigeria to all our Indian delegates and the rest of the delegates and the other parts of the world who is watching this webinar. So as you all know, Nigeria has the fastest growing economy in the Africa and it has the highest GNP on the continent. So Nigeria has the largest population on the continent and it's the third largest manufacturing sector. So the country also has the largest agricultural output and the highest number of cattle. And definitely it's a, it's a country of biodiversity and a lot of importance is being given to the culture as well. Uh, so with this, I uh, request our uh, chairman of uh, the founder chair of ISM SICS Society, uh, none other than Dr. Amulya Sahu, sir, uh, who has put all his efforts to bring up this uh, society to the international level. I request our founder chair, Dr. Amulya Sahu, sir, to please say a few words. I welcome to the Nigerian and Sarah Leon and other our friends to this conference and it gives us a great pleasure that uh, they have come forward to be a part of us. This journey is going to be memorable because Africa, we have a, we can do a lot there and they are so willing to learn. It will be a wonderful give and take. We'll learn many things from them and they will learn something from us. So I welcome you all. Thank you so much. Now, uh, thank you, Sahu, sir, uh, for those uh, short and swift comments. Now, I would like yeah. to request uh, Dr. Ja Jagannath Boramani, sir, the first person to do topical SICS in India. And uh, for the rest of the people here, uh, for the Nigerian and uh, uh, for the Sierra Leone delegates and the office bearers, uh, Dr. Sahu and Dr. Boramani are like the two eyes of the ISM SICS society. So I request uh, Dr. Jagannath Boramani, sir, to please say the journey of ISM SICS Society. Over to you, Boramani, sir. Sir, you are muted, I guess. Yeah. Boramani. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, good evening, all of you. I welcome the office bearers of the Nigeria and Sierra Leone chapter of ISM SICS to this global organization. And I welcome all our attendees, the delegates, who are, those who are in the audience, to uh, this uh, webinar of installation of Nigeria and Sierra Leone chapter of ISM SICS. Can you see my uh, slides? Yes, sir. We are able yes. to see that. Yeah. Now, this is a short talk about for those who are new to ISM SICS. Uh, to know, they should know what is this organization is all about. This is a global organization, ISM SICS, uh, which was uh, our founder chairman is Dr. Amulya Sahu, and this organization was formed in 2005 in Mumbai in a workshop on SICS. The main purpose of this organization is to spread the knowledge about this beautiful art of SICS surgery across the globe. Immediately after the formation, we started for me, uh, having international workshops and international conferences. Our first conference was in China in 2005. The next conference was in 2007 in Malaysia. This was a three days uh, conference with wet lab, live surgeries and deliberations. In the next year, we went to Indonesia. The annual conference of Indonesia, Peridami, was organized under the aegis of ISM SICS. In 2009, there was a conference, the fourth international conference in Egypt, as well as in Sweden, conference was there. In 2009 itself, we went to Philippines also, and two sessions were given, given for ISM SICS in their annual conference. In 2013, ISM SICS organized a live surgical workshop, as well as camp, and a small conference in South Africa. In 2015, ISM SICS was invited to APACRS, for conducting a wet lab on SICS. I was the first editor of ISM SICS and we have published seven journals of ISM SICS 
this activity stopped when i became the uh, chairman uh, executive chairman for ismsics but now under the leadership of dr bk nayak we are going to restart this activity of publishing the international journal of ismsics from 2015 onwards we decided to hold global conference the world conference every 2 years and the very first conference was held in pune in maharashtra india this was a 3 days conference attended by about 700 delegates in 2017 Uh, our partners for second world conference were arvind i care system this was again a three days conference with wet lab live surgeries and deliberations in the same conference we entered into an mou memorandum memorandum of, of understanding with help pc organization this organization is into uh, the manufacturing of simulators for sics surgery in 2018 in woc the world or the world ophthalmic congress ISMSICS was invited for a session on SICS as well as we conducted wet lab in Barekar Eye Institute in Barcelona and in Barekar Eye Institute professor Rafael Barekar he launched our ebook on master's guide of SICS this was a publication of ISM SICS we did multiple CMEs across india at various places and Uh, all the state conferences as well as the all india conferences they gave us symposia smsic symposia was there in various conferences and in 2019 there was another the third big conference the third world conference of ismsic ccc 2019 uh, this was attended by more than 1000 delegates the all india conference also started giving two big sessions in the major hall magic of ssis 1 and 2 successively for four years in woc 2020 virtual we were given a full session on ssis we had one conference in bangkok but because of the corona pandemic it had to be cancelled in november 2020 and our next biennial world congress will be in uh, it was supposed to be in september 2021 but now because of the corona it has been postponed to february 2022 this will be in jointly with pgi chandigarh in the kolkata conference an announcement was done for ccc 2023 in us but now this will be taken in 2025 this will be the sixth biennial conference and the fifth conference will be jointly with lv prasad i institute hyderabad we have presence and chapters in all the states of india and we are also present in various countries and we are very glad that two new countries are joining us ism ssis has also started a global ssis teaching program uh, this is a internet based the teaching program online which will be free to all the members of ism ssis and ism ssis has also started surgical training program on ssis stimulator All, already 7 to 8 batches have been completed presently this uh, training is offered in mumbai only but slowly will be spreading it across the globe there was virtual launching of brazil us mexican chapters in the recent past there was launching of the women's wing of ism ssis also and very soon we are going to launch the young ophthalmologist wing of ism ssis these are the glimpses of the physical launching of the chapters in egypt and bangladesh during the pandemic pandemic in the last 15 months we conducted lot of webinars almost 38 webinar we conducted and our attendance maximum attendance had touched almost 10000 so i request everyone who are not life member of ism ssis can become members on this website you can take a screenshot of this slide this is the link for membership thank you very much uh thank you sahu sir for showing the wonderful journey uh, the ismsic society has come through for all these years uh and uh, now i would request our uh, president ismsic society who is none other than dr uh, devashish bhattacharya sir devashish sir are yes, you there yes sir anivad good evening please uh, say a few words about this launch ceremony yeah uh, it's always been a pleasure uh, and this uh, happening in uh, our dear countries in nigeria uh, it's um, it's very hard uh, forming that uh, we uh, can uh, be a part with the nigerian 
uh, friends and uh, create this platform. Uh, I think we have a long way to go and uh, we will go together and achieve a lot. Um, it is for countries like India, Nigeria and uh, the entire Africa as a whole and the Indian subcontinent to uh, really uh, improve and take forward SICS because it suits our conditions the best. And I definitely wish all the office bearers, all the members who have joined in this uh, ISMIF uh, Nigerian chapter, all the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, uh, for those uh, wonderful comments. And definitely, I echo with your thoughts that definitely developing countries like India, Nigeria, I think uh, SICS is the way to go. And uh, definitely in the developed countries as well, as we launched in uh, America uh, and uh, Mexico as well, just a few months back. I think it's, it's uh, growing global. And uh, fortunately, we'll try to see that it occurs across the globe. Uh, now, I uh, thank you, uh, Devasis, sir, once again. Now, I request our dynamic uh, chief national coordinator, uh, Dr. Satanshu Mathur, sir. Mathur, sir, are you there? Yeah. yeah, yeah sure. I request you to thank please you. Uh, uh, bless this ceremony with a few words of your choice, please. Thank you, Shinivas. I endorse the words of our president, Dr. Devashi Bhattacharya, sir, that SICS is a need of developing countries like India and Nigeria. And we welcome all the Nigerian chapter office bearers and we wish them good luck. We hope we will work together for the improvement of the technical SIT here. And this technique is not the technique of poor country now. This is being accepted by developed country also. And we wish them good luck on the installation of this IT chapter. Thank you, Shinwar. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mathur sir, uh, for those nice comments. Now, uh, if Parikshit sir is there, I think he is yet to join. So once he joins, we'll have uh, uh, comments from him as well. Uh, Viresh, can you please start the screen share? Now we are coming to the launch of the Nigerian and the Sierra Leone countries. And it's a proud honor for ISM SICS Society to have both of these countries. So before that, it's my privilege to introduce a young, dynamic ophthalmologist from India, Dr. Arti Heda worked as a consultant in Africa for four years, handling all the anterior segment surgeries. And she is presently working as a consultant of anterior segment surgeon at KKI Institute, Pune, Maharashtra. She runs a webinar series surfing the anterior segment under the Young Ophthalmologist Society of India, which is one of the budding uh, the society uh, of uh, Indian uh, subcontinent. And she's also the section editor of Glaucoma and uh, the YouTube channel and uh, national coordinator for ISM SICS and also the program coordinator for ISM SICS Africa. And she runs the masterclass webinar series under the I Today group. And her area of interest is the cataract, glaucoma, cornea, and refractive surgery. I think uh, we should all accolade Dr. Arti Heda and because of whom these two countries are a part of ISM SICS family now. Thank you, Dr. Arti, for all your efforts. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, it's my uh, esteemed privilege to install the chairman, Dr. Adamu Mohammed, sir. Dr. Adamu Mohammed, uh, his uh, qualification, MSD, PHEC, his uh, designation is the consultant ophthalmologist and associate uh, professor of ophthalmology in the Usmanu uh, Danfordio University Teaching Hospital in Sokoto. So, uh, I now request our chairman, Dr. Amulya Sahu, sir, to please present a bouquet for our chairman of the Nigerian country of ISM SICS Society. Uh, can you, uh, Sahu, sir, can you please present the medal, please? Yep. Thank you, Thank sir. You. I now request uh, to please present him a bouquet. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Next. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Adamu, sir. So, Thank you very much. It's my proud uh, priv privilege to install our vice chairman, uh, Dr. Achigbu. Uh, she is uh, uh, the consultant ophthalmologist of Federal Medical Center, Overy Imo State in Overy. So, I request our uh, chairman, Dr. Amulyanath, uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Jagannath Boramani, sir, 
to please uh, present uh, her uh, medal and a bouquet please yeah welcome madam thank you so much sir thank you so much madam next i would like to introduce our secretary mushtala umar he is a consultant ophthalmologist uh, national eye center kaduna in the city kaduna i request our president dr debashish uh, bhattacharya sir to please present him a medal yeah uh, welcome uh, dr murtala this is the way we are installing and meeting people well <laughs> all the best thank and you and also thank you please uh, present him a bouquet sir yeah yeah thank you thank you so much sir uh, welcome dr umar uh, i now i would like to introduce our assistant secretary of the nigerian chapter dr mustafa bature uh, he is a lecturer at usmanu danfodio university um, from sokoto so i now request uh, dr satanshu mathur sir to please present him with a medal and we offer him a bouquet as well dr mustafa we welcome you in the family of ihs messages as assistant secretary and wish you good luck and we hope that under your dynamic leadership this state chapter will be a good achievement thank you very much we welcome thank you, you in the family thank yeah. you thank you thank you mathur sir and uh, thank you dr uh, mustafa i would now like to introduce our uh, scientific committee members uh, presently we have is dr ibrahim sule Uh, he is a senior registrar from Usmano Usmano uh, Danfodio University Teaching Hospital from Sokoto. Uh, I request uh, Dr. Ms. Ravindra sir uh, to please install him with a medal and the bouquet. Yeah, congratulations, Mr. Ibrahim Sule, and I welcome you to the fold of International Society of Small Incision Cataract Surgeries, and we look forward to your community, your contributions to the science and art of. this science this this uh, uh, surgery uh, thank you ravindra sir uh, i would now thank like you very much thank you yeah. great i would now like to install uh, our another scientific member dr umar naziru yabo who is a senior registrar at national eye center kaduna from uh, sokoto i request uh, dr bnr subuddhi sir to please uh, install him with the medal and also with the bouquet thank you thank you dr yebo next i would like to install uh, dr igvu ude a senior registrar uh, from fmc uh, bida from bida uh, niger state so i would like to request uh, dr amulya sahu sir to please present him with the medal and the bouquet uh, welcome dr ude thank you sau sir next i would like to call upon dr bala musawa who is the junior registrar from udut sokoto city i request dr boramani sir to please present him with a medal and the bouquet yeah welcome dr bala thank you boramani sir and now i uh, would like to honor dr uchena Nwako, the senior registrar and uh, from the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital from FCT Abuja. I request our president, Dr. Boramani sir, to please present him with the uh, medal and the bouquet. Yeah, welcome, Dr. Nwako. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Next. <clears throat> I request uh, Dr. Arthi Heda to do the honors. i uh, would like to install na oketa senior registrar from institute uh, university of uh, abuja teaching hospital from abuja welcome dr arthur welcome to the family hope we continue this journey together yeah can you please present uh, madam with the bouquet and the medal please welcome once again thank you you can go ahead arti yeah. so now uh, after the uh, 
Nigeria country. We now move on to our next neighboring country, which is Sierra Leone. So uh, I welcome you all on behalf of Team ISMSICS. So let, uh, it's my honor to uh, introduce. Uh, okay, fine. So the sequence is a bit uh, changed, but uh, we'll just go ahead. Go ahead. So uh, I want to. I would like to install Dr. Harrison Williams, uh, who is holding a post of secretary. Please, please. He is working in Ju University Teaching Hospital in Freetown. So I now request Dr. Sahu sir to present him a medal and a bouquet. Welcome, Dr. Lloyd, to the family of ISMSICS. So uh, I now would like to install Dr. Uh, Dr. John Martia, who is a very good friend of mine, who is holding a post of president. Uh, he is he is currently working in UMCI Hospital in Freetown. I now request Buramani sir to uh, present him a bouquet and a medal. Yeah, welcome, Dr. John. I hope under your guidance, your chapter will contribute a lot towards the development of further development of SICS. Okay, now uh, I would like to install uh, Dr. Matthew Vandy, who, who is going to be the chairman of the organization for the Cerulean chapter, who is consultant of ophthalmologist, director of hospital and ambulance services. Uh, he is uh, also working in Freetown. So I now would like to uh, call upon Bhattacharya sir to present him a bouquet and a medal. Welcome uh, Dr. Matthew and uh, Sunny Roy for, uh, and we welcome you to the ISMICS Society, exciting days ahead, please, welcome. So I now would like to install uh, Dr. Uh, Vaima who is working in uh, 34 military hospital uh, in city of Freetown, Sierra Leone. He is the uh, scientific committee member for the Sierra Leone chapter. I now would like to uh, invite Satanshu Mathur sir to present him a bouquet and a medal. Dr. Idris, we welcome you in the family of ISMSICS and we wish you good luck to promote this technique in your country and in other African countries. Thank you. So I uh, now would like to install Dr. Jalika, who is a very good friend of mine. I met her in Uganda in 2017. And after that, we are meeting virtually, Doctor. So uh, she is the executive member uh, of the organization for the Sierra Leone chapter. She is doing a lot of work in the country. She is associated with the government hospital. Uh, and uh, I, she has been busy with the corneal transplantation surgeries for which she is called uh, a U.S. surgeon in currently she is busy with that. So it's glad that you were able to join us. Uh, I now li would like to call MS Ravindra sir to present her a bouquet and a medal. Welcome to uh, uh, Dr. Mustafa. It's nice to uh, have you here on this forum. We we'll look forward to interact with you in the years to come. Best wishes to you and your country. So thank you so much, Virish, for that presentation. Uh, Joshi, sir, uh, with your permission, yeah. can we go ahead with the... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, thank you very much, uh, everyone. Uh, so I once again welcome all the Nigerian office bearers and the Sierra Leone office bearers to this wonderful family of ISMSICS Society. And I'm sure with the collaboration with these two countries, ISMSICS Society will take up more forward. Let's have more scientific deliberations and let's take this technique worldwide. So with this, let's launch the, the scientific part of this function. And I thank all the office bearers of ISMSICS Society for installing the Nigerian and the Sierra Leone uh, delegates. Thank you very much, uh, the office bearers. And uh, we once again welcome all the delegates. And I now request uh, Dr. Arti, uh, who has been the, the Sutradhara of this uh, program, to please take over forward. Thank you. So uh, we'll begin with our first talk by Dr. Adamu Mohammed. Uh, he's going to talk to us about challenges of MSICS in uh, Nigeria. So over to you, sir. You can start sharing your screen, please. Hmm? 
It's clear? Good afternoon. Yes. Hello? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Your screen is visible. You can just put the presentation on the slideshow and then we are good to go. Okay. I can go ahead. Yes, yes. Hello, Dr. Ati. Yes, sir. I can go ahead. Yes, you can go ahead. All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Adamu. Um, I'm going to be uh, um, discussing challenges of M M C MSICS in Nigeria. Uh, Dr. Ati said I have um, five minutes. So um, I, I'll try to be short and brief before she starts reminding me of time. Um, the outline for discussion will be this way. Uh, we'll discuss, we'll look at, uh, we'll just introduce um, briefly the SICS. Arti, any problem? It looks like we have uh, some network issue from his end. Yeah, so uh, Dr. Mohammed, we, uh, we were not able to hear you properly. Hello? Uh, yes, sir. Am, am I audible? Yes. Is... You, are, you are audible, but we uh, we are not able to see your screen now. one thing I population based surveys that have been uh, taking place over some time and then it has also been shown that it can actually uh, take care of the most advanced cataracts with a minimum complication rate and the shortest amount of time RT does have surgeries in less than five minutes I learned so um, and you see in the shortest amount of time you, uh, you'll be able to achieve a lot with um, uh, SICS. But despite all these um, 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 good points, we still have challenges, especially in our country. <clears throat> and this is what I'm going to talk about. One of the first challenges I would like to discuss is the uh, human resource availability. Uh, we do have a challenge of having appropriate human resources to deliver this um, SICS in Nigeria. And um, here, I, um, what I mean by human resources is just not only ophthalmologists, but actually uh, ophthalmologists that can perform high volume SICS and then um, having uh, nurses uh, also uh, in, in, in the theater who can scrub for this high volume surgeries. I'm talking about their number. I'm talking also about distribution. Basically, what we do know is that there is a high concentration of um, ophthalmologists and highly skilled um, of family diagnosis in the um, urban uh, areas. Now, despite that, uh, uh, there's an, uh, because of this, there's an inequitable distribution of um, uh, uh, these uh, human resources. Areas that are needed, where, where they're needed, they're not there. Um, so this is a really a very big challenge we, we really need to uh, uh, handle as far as SISS is concerned. We're talking about numbers and then we are talking about their uh, um, uh, distribution. The um, other question to ask, actually, this is a rhetorical one. Uh, it's a challenge for us. Uh, it's really, it's, it's uh, manual small incision cataract surgery really, really affordable in Nigeria? Um, is, is it really a, a low cost technology for us? Um, the question is, if you say it's affordable, the average cost in a public hospital is roughly about $70. In, 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 that's in, in public hospital. In private hospital, you can go uh, uh, between $200 to $250. And that's really quite high for a developing country like ours. Now, government and um, non-governmental organizations have increased funding towards this cataract intervention. But the question is, is this sustainable? 
Is this going to continue like this? And uh, one of the key things that we do know that affects um, uh, this um, um, affordability is the, the, the consumable supply. We really need a regular consumable supply, crescent knives, the dyes, the viscoelastic materials, the IOLs. Now, these are said to be uh, what makes SICS cheaper, I mean, less expensive than FECO. But in, in, in Nigeria, this um, consumables need to be imported. They are not locally produced. And therefore, the costs, uh, talking about the direct cost only to the patients, is, 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 is actually uh, really high. Um, and, and because of this, is actually a, a very big challenge. And you can see on my slide, uh, power source is one of the challenges I talk about. And I, I, I mentioned, I wrote it earlier, and you can see uh, that really, as uh, I started the presentation, the light went off. And it's a challenge. I mean, for us, this will increase uh, um, the cost, um, direct cost to the, to the patient uh, when, when you're talking about uh, SICS. So you really need to ask the question about its affordability uh, in the country. The other challenge um, I will quickly talk about is about um, outcome, outcome issues. What, I, what, what, we, what, what we do know from, again, population-based surveys is that we have really a, a, a gross variation in the reported presenting visual equities and the best corrected vision, uh, best corrected visual equities in post-operated patients. Now, what, what happens basically, uh, because what, what explains this variation mainly is because when, when biometrics are done, desirable IOLs are not available. Really, when you do a biometry, sometimes you don't get the desirable IOLs. And uh, when, you are, when, when you are doing a high volume surgeries, you just get IOLs that are close by. And then you get this uh, cross disparity between your presenting visual equity and your best corrected visual equity. And when you don't have biometry, in the absence of biometry, well, what determines the IOL power you, you, for you to use? And this will actually, uh, um, we know that this will lead to um, not having desirable. Um, uh, well, then the other uh, outcome issue that really we need to talk about um, that we have, have been uh, documented in surveys, um, the issue of having um, high uh, poor outcomes uh, beyond that uh, WHO recommended uh, 5%. Now, this basically what has been reported here uh, in many um, articles has to do with uh, 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 surgeon's factor. And this is uh, where I think this society will really help uh, go a long way uh, in addressing this challenge. The other challenge um, quickly is about service delivery issue. What pattern, what approach do we take to um, tackle um, uh, backlog, cataract backlog, backlogs in the surgical outreach or camps approach and or the base hospital, you see your base hospital. I think basically in Nigeria, we're combining the two um, the two are being combined uh, in several proportions, but it's good for us to look at this as a challenge. Um, and the base hospitals, uh, um, because the, 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 like what I mentioned before, the funding by the NGOs uh, basically supports more of the surgical outreaches and camps than base hospital surgeries. So you see more of, uh, numbers, more um, uptake of cataract surgeries um, in the surgical outreach and camps. And then basically it's also about uh, the, the, the barriers that has been documented over time, yeah, repeatedly overflogged cost, direct cost to the patient. But we do know, even when you remove the, the issue of cost, when you remove the barrier of cost, it's not everybody that will take the surgery. So our approach, our cataract surgical service delivery, actually, uh, I think it's, we, we need to look at how this service is being there, both in the surgical outreach and in the base hospital. Then this will help uh, us uh, overcome this challenge. What do I recommend? One, um, local production of consumables. I think, um, um, well, pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical companies, we may need to learn from our uh, international uh, colleagues uh, how they went about uh, um, this uh, production of consumables. And that's why this collaboration will really help us. Um, uh, IRS, Viscos, Crescent Knives, all the co consumables, I, I sincerely believe if they are locally um, produced, the, um, the, the, the issue of uh, um, 
cost affordability will um, 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 re really um, be reduced. Uh, training, um, I think I will dwell some more on this um, training. Um, that we really need um, to, 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 to have uh, training centers specifically uh, um, um, addressing this um, as I see us. Now, uh, one, one challenge uh, with training, um, if, if having these um, um, simulators really, really will help because uh, I mean, people who don't want to have poor outcomes because of training, you don't want to, uh, you want people to have been stable with the um, simulators before going on live patients. And there has been this uh, sim Oscar that has uh, been modified and approved by experts for use in uh, simulation uh, based trainings. And I think it, it, it will be quite handy for uh, um, the IS, ISMCS to make this available to uh, uh, um, um, people to get um, to train. Then there's this also simulator. I, I, I think uh, during one of our, during the earlier presentation, we saw the Help Me See MICS uh, simulator uh, in New York. I think this, this will really help us uh, in training. Um, the other thing I, I feel will help us in terms, especially in terms of outcome, is um, uh, regular audit and monitoring. And this tool, uh, the cataract surgical uh, by the WHO, it's, it's quite handy and helpful. It will help everyone you want to do an audit for your system, uh, for your hospital. It will tell you where the problems are and where you need to improve. I think we need to uh, look at that. And then for our research, uh, recommendation, um, what surgical technique actually is best to yeah, I mean, yeah, I know the, the researchers that talked about Scalar and Shichen, uh, talking about Nile, uh, Chevron, or Fran, which one is best? I mean, I, I know um, it would be good to know which one is, is, is best suited for us. I know we, we look at what has been done before, but it's good to have, uh, let's look at and then even the, uh, I just use these two examples, the capsular opening techniques, the type of um, um, cataracts we do have, the capsular opening will technically be best suited for us, actually. I, I think the, the approach, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the, the, the approach uh, to cataract surgery service delivery system, these are areas that um, can go into research and see which one best suits us. Um, this time I, um, I sincerely thank you for your time, um, um, for listening to this. Dr. Ati, I think I'm on time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, that was actually a, a very good idea you gave us about the practice of SICS in Nigeria. So um, before we move on to the discussion, I just want Mr. Rahul and Mr. Raman, I have been getting comments uh, that the Facebook audio is not working and probably there is some issue. So I've got this message from Nigeria as well as Indian audience. So please check into it. Uh, Dr. Sahu, sir, uh, over to you for your comments. Uh, Dr. Adamo, I, it was an interesting uh, presentation from you. And uh, we have a lot, we can interact a lot. And Arti will be our coordinating person. And uh, please, uh, we, we see a lot of uh, uh, opportunity for interaction. Every okay. details about instrument, training, and everything we can discuss and find out a long-term uh, plan to improve the standard there. And we can also think of exchange programs and uh, start uh, you know, training program there. All these possibilities are there. So Arthi will be dealing with you and take it forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for thank your comments. You. Thank, thank you. you very much. So thank you, Sahu, sir. Uh, Bonamani, sir, would you like to comment? I'm sure a few of his points will be covered in your talk as well about which incision to take. But would you like to make any comment? Yes, yes. there are so many challenges and problems, but I think uh, ISMSIC central team as well as the Nigeria team can join hands and try to rectify most of the challenges. We'll work together and we'll see that the journey, future journey is smooth one. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So moving on to our next talk, next we have uh, with us Dr. M.S. Ravindra sir, who needs no introduction. He is an excellent teacher. He is an excellent surgeon. 
uh, and uh, i'm sure we will uh, make the evening very bright with his wonderful videos uh, over to you sir for your presentation Uh, good evening, uh, uh, the team leaders in India, Dr. Sahu, Dr. Boramani, Dr. Uh, uh, all all the colleagues, uh, our president, Dr. Debashish, and the new friends from Nigeria. I would uh, you know uh, convey my greetings to you, and uh, I will we will certainly handhold uh, wherever the deficits are there. I was feeling that we were so lucky uh, that all the excellent manufacturing companies are today are in India. Uh, the, the one of the best products for the entire world are being made in India. I'll show some of the instruments and including eyewalls, the best eyewalls in the world are made in India, the best crescents, best knives. I mean, there are industries, hundreds of industries, uh, which can really support your needs at this point of time. Uh, I would like to present a couple of videos. Uh, you, you can ask me to stop at any time, uh, doctor. Uh, this is a case where the cataract is very mature. Uh, I'm sitting on the temporal side. What I'll do initially, this is under tropical anesthesia. I would have, I'll show you how I do the tropical anesthesia. We use proparacaine drops as well as some sponges, which has dipped in proparacaine, placed in the site of incision. That's the temporal side. I've got a waist coat scissors on my left, right hand. This is a very good quality. One is to do 0.2 millimeter uh, teeth forceps, which holds the conjunctiva and uh, tenons together. I'm making an incision in the upper temporal quadrant because that's the steep axis. Upper temporal quadrant is the, has got the steep axis in the cornea. I wish to correct some amount of astigmatism. That's a marker which I've developed, which measures six millimeters. It creates two points there, and I'm putting a straight incision of the sclera. I'm using a thermal cautery, not a wired cautery. It's, it's a very simple, low-cost cautery. And this is a short, short length blade. I mean, it doesn't touch the lid at all, as you can see here, because lids are not anesthetized. There's no block given. So you'll have to choose a knife, which is just adequately uh, long enough to create a nice rectangular or trapezoid incision, depending upon whether you're breaking it. That's a, a 5.2 millimeter keratome which makes a very tiny incision initially. Initially, incision uh, inner lip is just about a millimeter. I'm injecting air followed by trypan blue. I'm aspirating the trypan blue. I'm not pushing viscoelastic because sometimes trypan blue can go through the zonules and uh, you know, get into the vitreous cavity. Uh, I have entered the, uh, uh, the AC through a puncture in the floor of the tunnel and that keeps the viscoelastic in the eye. I'm trying to make a smaller rexis initially because there is an upthrust from the lenticular bag. And uh, I'm going to complete it now and going to extend it to make it larger. I mean, in FACO, we always aim for 5 millimeter or 4.5 or 5.5 uh, CCC. In, uh, in, in SICS, we have the comfort of taking a very large rexis. It depends upon your techniques, whether you can uh, you know, would like to take a large rexis. Large rexis always advantages. Don't go with the impression happens in fake emulsification where when you have a large rexis, you can't handle it eff eff efficiently. Here, large rexis always is an advantage. I'm trying to debulk the contents of the capsular by aspirating using a Simcoe cannula and bulb. I'll rotate the nucleus now and all the loose cortex that is in front of the nucleus is, as you can see here, is aspirated into the Simcoe cannula. Simcoe cannula has got a gentle curve and it's, it's extremely good in doing it. I'm extending it now using a cystitome. As you can see here, I'll have a small <coughs> runoff here. In spite of it, I'm going to manage it. <coughs> so I'm holding it now with uh, ultrada forceps now. Carelessness, it goes to the periphery. When it goes to periphery, do not try to pull it out. There are various techniques of pulling it out. And at some point of time, we may pull it out and the tear can extend. Always comfortably make a small nick let the runoff be there, there, and then you can complete the axis. Now, very easily, I can rotate the nucleus into the anterior capsule, uh, the anterior chamber. There are two ways now. Either the entire nucleus can be taken out. For that, you will have to have a trapezoid. I am going to mark here. That's the outer one. Trapezoid tunnels go like that to the periphery. Tunnel lip is larger. 
to accommodate the nucleus and it comes back. Trapezoid shape. If you have a trapezoid shape tunnel or the, the side pockets that, that otherwise it's called, you can remove the nucleus without bisecting it. Here I'm going to bisect it and then with a cystitome itself, you can bisect it, but cystitome needs to be continuously injecting visco into the anterior chamber. Otherwise, you'll have enormous amount of damage to endothelium, which you'll have to pre pre prevent it. Then this cyst the nucleus is taken out, sliding on a vectus. It's a very easy technique. And uh, after that, it's a high myopic patient, as you can see from the red reflex. You have to remove the entire cortex because cortex is immunogenic. It causes inflammation in the eye. So you need to remove the cortex completely by um, the aspiration. So I use a reverse uh, Simco cannula to aspirate the cortex from the capsular back. Then you put the lens and that's the end of the surgery. There's no need to su suture this wound because you're not stretched it or heated it. So that's a lens which can go because it's a six millimeter tunnel. You don't have to fold it. Unfolded lens can be easily implanted in the capsular back. Ensure that the lens goes into the capsular back. I'll show another modern video that uh, the current practice of mine. So the, now I'm not taking a conjunctiva tenons flap and I'm making a direct incision. I'm sitting on the temporal side. There's a 2.8 millimeter keratome. I fill the chamber with viscoelastic tunnel floor entry technique I, there are a lot of videos on phaco suction on YouTube. You can always watch them. And I'm going to do comfortably a good rexis. Uh, this is again done under topical anesthesia. I'll run through a little faster. And then uh, do a hydrodissection. That's it. I'm, here, I'm, as you can see here, now I'll just go slow. I'm, I'll go back. This is a very important technique. I'll just go back. So I'm just extending the inner lip laterally so that the endothelial damage is, doesn't happen when you remove the nucleus. Hydrodissection, single point hydrodissection, rotate the nucleus in the capsular bag, and uh, I'm aspirating some amount of loose cortex that's generated in front of the nucleus. And uh, with a sustainer, you can break the nucleus into two pieces. That's a sustainer. I'm pulling the nucleus down slightly. Through the cystitome, I'm bisecting it in the capsular bag. So the nucleus is broken into two pieces within the capsular bag, and it becomes easy to remove it out of the, and the pupil, the uh, rexis. Then I'm going to hold it with a mini vectus. It's already cut there. I'm going to slide it out, uh, supported by a cannula in front, 25 gauge cannula, which is continuously injecting viscoelastic, as you can see here. It's a very friendly to the endothelium. And as you are injecting viscoelastic continuously, the other half also is removed. I'll go a little fast. Cortical aspiration, and you can put any lens that you have of choice. This kind of tunnel produces about half diopter of SIA. That is the comparison between the preoperative, uh, you know, uh, uh, measurements of the uh, keratometry and postoperative. Half is what it generates. So it's very friendly to the eye. Okay. I'll just show another uh, very quick video. I'll show the, this is the one, and this is not expensive. The BSS go is loaded into a silicon bulb. I'm injecting it. So the amount of fluid that goes inside is controlled by your pressure on the silicon bulb, and aspiration is also done. And both infusion and aspiration is controlled by your visual feedback, as you see under microscope. You can double irrigate it by pressing this fluid back into the eye and pressing this also into the eye. So this is a very friendly uh, uh, comparison, which is comparable to the high-end uh, FACO machine, because the amount of fluid that goes inside, amount of vacuum, both are in good control. Uh, one other small uh, technique I would like to show you. Uh, we are all familiar with scleral, uh, in scleral fixated eye walls. There is an alternative. This is an Indian-made iris fixation lens, which can be enclaved to the back of the iris, as you can see here. It's a very quick technique. And there is a slit there, and the cannula goes inside and pushes iris into the slit. And this lens sits on the back of the iris, and uh, whenever there is a, uh, you know, break in the hyaloidal phase, and you can do a vitrectomy and employ this technique. 
I'll just take another minute's time. Yes, sir. Posterior so subcapsular cataract can also be very nicely handled. There is no higher risk of posterior capsular tear. As you can see here, I've done a rexis. I'll go fast. Remove the nucleus and posterior capsule is intact. The chance of breaking of the posterior capsule in spite of a pre-existing posterior subcapsular or capsular opacification is very, very late. As you can see here, this is an Indian-made uh, multifocal lens. It's a beautiful lens, which gives both distance and near vision, and it can, it can be implanted. And I'm putting uh, in a tunnel uh, in the upper temporal quadrant here, because the steep axis, about half the diopter of steep axis can be neutralized by the tunnel incision. That's uh, a PSCC, as you can see. You can, in this technique of SIC, you can comfortably do a segmental hydrodissection without a risk of tearing it because the entire surgery is done under normal pressure. There's no high pressure in the anterior chamber, which pushes the capsule backwards and stretches it, and there's a possibility of a tear. Here, very gentle. The pressure is atmospheric pressure. You do this and then uh, you know, remove it and put a lens there. So that's a multifocal lens again. Yeah, this is uh, the last one. I would like to tell that topical anesthesia is possible, but there is a law, as Dr. Boromani has, has introduced this technique to us. And, uh, you know, initially, uh, shift from retrobulbar or parabulbar to subtenons, inject only one or two millimeters in subtenon injection, make a small leak in the lower nasal quadrant about eight millimeters away from it through conjunctive antinons and through a tiny blunt cannula, you can push about two ml of xylocaine. That's good enough. But later you can promote yourself. What I'm doing is that's a cornea. You have put the, uh, I put a small amount of cotton there and soak it with paracaine. Keep it at the place where we're going to hold the eye with the forceps and at the place where you're going to clear the tunnel. And in the eye, inside the eye, inject about 0.1 or 0.2 ml of uh, the uh, the uh, one percent lignocaine that gives an excellent anesthesia. So that's the end of my presentation. I'll be happy to uh, contribute my whatever uh, help that the Nigerian friends need uh, on a long-term basis. The, all the doctors of ISMS SICS in India will be very glad to cooperate and you know extend our help to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I am sure we all uh, were enjoying that show on our screens. Uh, sir is an excellent surgeon and an excellent teacher, as I told before. So we have with us Dr. Mustafa Badure from uh, Nigeria. Uh, so, sir, would you like to comment? Well, thank, thank you for the presentation. It has been a wonderful session of um, good surgeries out there. And I think we, in Nigeria, we don't have access to multifocal lenses uh, available maybe to every person, maybe except on, on demand. And if there are affordable uh, lenses, uh, multifocal, as you mentioned, iris color lenses, I think it will go a long way in helping our patients um, in to restore vision. So thank you for the discussion. Thank you. We have with us Dr. Williams from Sierra Leone. Uh, Dr. Williams, who is actually secretary uh, of the Sierra Leone chapter, would you like to comment or you have any question? Dr. Jalika, if you are around. Okay, so uh, I think we'll keep the discussion for the end. We move on to our third talk. Uh, I invite Dr. John, Don, Dr. John Martia from Cerulean. He's going to talk to us about the uh, capsulotomy in Cerulean. Over to you, Dr. John. Good evening and good afternoon to you all. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, you can start your screen share. So my presentation is on continuous covalina capsulorexis. 
it is relatively a new technique in Sierra Leone. I hope you're getting me. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Your screen is visible. We are good to go. You can continue. Yeah, please make it full screen. Slide show. This is the gold standard for modern cataract surgery. It was jointly invented by Dr. Howard Gimbal and Thomas Newham in 1985. Usually the ideal size is uh, between 5.5 millimeter to 6 millimeter in order to make sure that the cap capsular rim covers the optic of the lens. It has a steep learning curve. Uh, instruments that are normally used either singly or in combination are cystotum, utrata, and all 23 gauge microcapsulosis forceps. It needs a fully dilated pupil. For example, light is also needed for good red reflex. But in cases where you have mature or hypermature cataracts where there is no red reflex, you need to use a tri new stripe and blue. It is initiated by making a flip, uh, making a, uh, a flap and flipping it over. And then you can either do a push or pull of the flap, either in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. Then you should usually maintain circumferential forces. There are certain rules to follow. If they are uh, followed, then you will usually have a successful CCC. One is to make sure that your, your AC is always dipping with a viscoelastic. If you are using uh, forceps, you should hold the flap near the tearing edge and you should frequently regrasp the flap and bring the flap to the center. Do not press on the posterior lip, otherwise your OVD will egress and make the AC shallow. The advantages are that uh, it resists radial tears. Uh, it enhances proper hydro deception and it helps to make people in patients safer because it stabilizes the lens nucleus in the capsular bag where the uh, procedure can be performed. It is essential for irrigation and aspiration and it is good for proper centration of, of the lens into the capsular bag. And there is some uh, thoughts that it may reduce the incidence of posterior capsular opacification because it has direct contact and is firmly attached to the posterior capsule. In certain special situations, you may have to uh, use certain steps in order to uh, have a successful CCC. Like in hypermature cataract, you may either use a three-stage technique or you do an initial puncture, and then thereafter you can continue with your CCC. In the three-stage technique, you first use a mini capsulosis, as uh, previously shown to us by our previous speaker, and you decompress the lens bag, and then you can enlarge the capsulosis. Or as I said previously, you can also do initial puncture, decompress the lens bag before you continue your CCC. Congenital cataract cases uh, are usually uh, they are, they are difficult, they are notoriously difficult due to the fact that uh, the elastic capsule tends to extend and also there's a posterior vitreous pressure. But CCC needs to be done because this is the heart of the pediatric cataract surgery. So you need to use a high molecular weight viscoelastic and then carefully follow the rules of the CCC. You have to usually aim for uh, a slightly smaller capsulotomy. Now I have a, a video that I'll, I'll show of some cases that I did last week. Um, so in this case, I'm using a, a cystotone. I'm, I'm pushing. 
Is it visible now? Yes, it's visible. Yeah. So what I usually do is so go counterclockwise, and I use my I usually use the sister tool to flip over the flap, and then maintain a circumferential force. And at certain points, I have to use this way, this way elastic, but I notice that the, the, the AC is getting shallower. And most times also, at the end of it, I, I may need to use a, a, a U-tractor forceps. Yeah, I'm using a U-tractor forceps. So most of my cases are, are, are stained with tripan blue, like in this case of my choker tract. I found my choker tract. So this last case. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. John. Uh, let me congratulate you for those wonderful videos. Uh, I just wanted to find out how easy it is to get to pan blue in Sierra Leone. How? Come again, please. How easy it is to get to pan blue How's the availability of the dye? Mr. Rahul, you can uh, have we, his screen share. I think he was not able to do it. Yes, Dr. We Joe. usually get our, yes, we usually get our tripan blue from, uh, from India. Mo most of our the pro products we use are from India, from, from oral lab. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Buramani, sir, would you like to comment? Uh, yes, John, wonderful technique. I want to comment one thing, like many times we are stuck up <clears throat> when the capsule starts going to peri-peri. Now, it creates more tension for a preco surgeon than a, an SICS surgeon, but it is always better to bring a peripherally going capsule axis to the center. There are various techniques described, but I want to stress one more technique, which is perhaps new to many. It is a simpler technique. The Capsule axis starts going to periphery mainly because of the tension in the zonules and the, which creates a centrifugal force. So whatever force you are applying, you are not going circumferentially. Actually, you are trying to bring the capsule in the center. And plus there is a centrifugal force. And as a resultant, our capsule axis is going in a tangential direction. But sometimes the centrifugal force is more and the capsule starts going, capsule axis starts going to the periphery. So in such case, the region where it is going in the periphery, it is better to depress the region of the ciliary body with any blunt instrument like a closed forceps or a lens hoop. So if you depress the globe at the region of the ciliary body, it causes relaxation of the zonules and then it is comparatively easy to bring the peripherally going capsule axis to the center. This I wanted to give this a simple tip. You can try in your next case also whenever this thing happens. Dr. Sahu, sir, would you like to comment? 
Then I was just seeing the video. What is the forcep is doing there? When you are doing the axis, the forcep is all the time moving there. Is it got any any kind of significance, or it was just a, you have forgotten to take care of that, Doctor John? Yes, sir. Your forcep was moving there. If you are doing some the work forceps. or forcep, when you in your video oh, the, the forcep. Forcep. The forcep, yes, the forcep is usual to stabilize the globe. No, but it was not it's stabilizing, stabilizing. It, it was moving there. <laughs> yes, so well, I, uh, my, my plan was to stabilize it, but I, I think <laughs> it was just hanging down there. <laughs> uh, otherwise, you have, yes, you have, I also noticed that. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, otherwise you have, you have, your video was good and you had taken up uh, challenging cases and done a good job there. But I was just thinking what the what this magic is doing with this force there. <laughs> it happens to everybody, don't worry. That's a good it, one. Happens, it happens just once you don't notice that now you are busy doing the axis, so you forgot your left hand. It happens to all of us, don't worry. <laughs> I just brought to your notice so that it's a you know, fun you next time you, you realize this. <laughs> it happens. Next time I'll take it out of the out of the way. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, so thank you everyone for that uh, wonderful discussion. Uh, from the academic talk, let's move on to our next talk, which is again the uh, about challenges of training in uh, Nigeria when it comes to MSICS. So, I would like like to invite Dr. Uh, Umar for his talk. Over to you, Dr. Umar. Yeah, thank you very much. Can I have my slides shared? Yes, sir. Yeah. I want to say that it's a great pleasure meeting these wonderful uh, uh, soldiers. I have learned a lot, and I believe uh, there is a lot for us to learn from uh, India. Now, let me have the next slide, yes. Now, we all know that Nigeria is a country of over 200 million population. And more than 10 years ago, there was this National Blindness and Low Vision Survey that established that cataract uh, is responsible for more than 43% of blindness in persons who are 40 years and above. And if you, that, that is telling you about uh, roughly 8 million persons who are 40 years and above, because 20% of the population are 40 years and above, are roughly having blindness from cataracts. So there's a lot of work to do in Nigeria. Let's have the next slide. Now, just by way of remember, we know that uh, the word cataract uh, is a Greek word that uh, meant water. So I think we see the another challenge about the network. Dr. Umar, can you hear us? Looks like we he, we have lost him due to connect, uh, connection issues. Uh, yes. Next slide, please. Yes. My stable here. Can I talk to stable? Can I have the next slide, please? Next slide. Doctor Umar, can you see the slide? Can you hear me, please. Hello. Yes, Doctor Umar, can Hello? you? Hello. This is your next slide. Can I have the next slide? Can you, uh, Dr. Umar, uh, Dr. Umar, can you hear yes, me? Yes, it's my internet. Yes. I, yes. Yes, I can. I can. Yes. yes. And we can all know you? that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. In uh, as far back as 29 AD, there was evidence of, uh, you know, some instruments that were used for cataract surgeries in Greece and Egypt. And this is just to go back a little to history. And we all know that uh, couching has been uh, the 
old method of surgery. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, in, Nigeria, in fact, just behind National Eye Center, Kaduna, people still do couching. People still couch. In fact, in the National Blindness and Low Vision Survey that was conducted in Nigeria, quite a number of persons who had cataract surgery was from couching. So couching is still being done in Nigeria, despite uh, you know, years of uh, modern surgery. Let's have the next slide. Next slide, please. Yes. And uh, of course, the Hindus, in the earliest evidence of cataract surgery, you know, was backdated in the fifth century. There was evidence that uh, the Hindus were conducting some of these cataract surgeries. And uh, so let's go to the next slide. This is just a background before we uh, move to the challenges. Now, and this is just to show a calligraphy to show what was happening before. I mean, without anesthesia, people were you know, people carry out these surgeries. And I told you, unfortunately, these surgeries are still happening in Nigeria, couching. Let's have the next slide. Now, in Nigeria, uh, one of the first hospitals, the first eye hospital in Nigeria was uh, in Kano, a dedicated hospital for eye care in Nigeria. And that was built in 1943. And then uh, from ECWA stands for Evangelical Churches of West Africa, communities. And today, the hospital still stands and they get patients from all over the country. The National Eye Center was commissioned in 1991. Today is the only uh, mono-speciality eye hospital in Nigeria. And uh, of course, the University College Hospital Ibadan, which was the first tertiary hospital in Nigeria, also when the Department of Ophthalmology came into being. Now, these three hospitals contributed a lot in the training and retraining, and of course, uh, acquiring of skills for small incision cataract surgery in Nigeria. Although majority, as we'll see later, had to travel to India to acquire these skills, especially for IOL in, uh, implantation. Let's have the next slide. Now, this is the premises of National Eye Center, a very beautiful uh, center. And uh, okay, so let's have the next slide. Now, like you all know, in the early 90s, the most popular procedure for uh, cataract surgery was ICCE in Nigeria. We didn't meet ICC during our training, but our, our serious met. It's just historical. I have never watched ICCE being done. But what we met was ECCE and posterior chamber IOL. We must have to thank India because before the Arabian the, you know, breakthrough, Nigeria, people were doing ECC, but lenses were not implanted because the lenses were not even affordable until Arabic and you know, other companies in India were able to come up with low cost lenses. And now it's readily available in Nigeria and other parts of uh, the developing countries. Now the manual small incision cataract surgery initially was not too popular. Majority were doing ECC, but later became popular. As you see in the next slide, let's have the next slide. Let's have the next slide. Now, uh, like I said earlier, the trainings for minor small incision cataract surgery, initially uh, our seniors had to go to India to acquire some of these skills. Now, those of them that land in India came back, especially in eye center, I know a very senior doctor like Dr. Adejo, who was formerly the chief medical director of National Eye Center, went to India for the microsurgery and uh, ophthalmologists all over the country had to come to National Eye Center for training on IOL implantation. And then even faith-based uh, and some health, tertiary health institutions later had took on over. And as we speak now, very few Nigerians travel out to acquire uh, skills for manual small decision cataract surgery. Most of the surgeries are done at base and then in-house training. Let's have the next slide. Now, for what we do in Nigeria is residency training. And we have these two colleges, the West African College of Surgeons and then the National Postgraduate Medical College of Surgeons. Usually, uh, a, a, a doctor spends about average of five to six years to become a fellow. Of recent, the West African College of Surgeons introduced what they call membership. Before now, they had, uh, a program called Diploma in Ophthalmology, which was only two years. 
And that diploma was meant to train persons who remain in secondary centers where the patients are, so that the fellows you know, are largely populated in tertiary centers. But unfortunately, with time, majority of these diplomates had to undergo fellowship. And so the, 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 the primary purpose for which the diploma was set or was, was, was not being met. So the College of Research came up with membership. And the membership is spent three years to become a member of the Crown College of Ophthalmology, the structured program, and they just started. Uh, we're hoping that soon they'll be graduates of the membership. Now, these two colleges set up, uh, when you're training, there are a number of surgeries you have to do from, uh, I mean, in the first two, three years. And then these surgeries from observation to assisted surgery and then to performing these surgeries alone. Now, at the end of the two, three years, you are, you know, you are, you are assigned to, at, uh, you know, attend the exams. If you are successful, then you now continue as a senior registrar. Now, I know that in India, as Bangladesh, and other parts of uh, the Asia, the, the, the training are separated. The first two years or there about, it, it, it's not centered towards skill. It's more of academic. Then when you graduate and you decide to take it, particular area for example. I think uh, we have the connection issue again at from your end. So let's wait for a couple of minutes for him to get a good network again. I think he has logged out of the meeting. So till that time, uh, we can take some comments for from the other office bearers of Nigeria. Yes, carry on. So we have with us Dr. Yeah. Sule, Ibrahim Sule, sir. Hello. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Trying to uh, get to Dr. Umar. I, I can't get him on the phone, actually, to hear whether he can. Yeah. So we, uh, <laughs> Dr. Boramani, sir, what do you suggest we move on with your talk? No problem. Once he joins, he can talk again on the remaining yes, slides. I am really? sure he had a couple of more slides. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. No problem. So, yes. So, uh, uh, sorry for the inconvenience. I'm sure Dr. Umar will join us soon. No, uh, hello. Yes, I think. Hello? Uh, yes, Dr. Umar. Yeah, he's joining. Yes, no. He, yes, he yes, has joined. I have a better internet. Yeah. You have a better have internet. A better yeah. So, just sure. give me a second. Uh, I share this screen again. I'm sorry for that. So you can carry on, Dr. Mark. Yes. I can't see the screen. Good, good. Now let me have the next slide. Yes. Sorry, I'm sorry for that. I have to change my internet. Don't worry, we all we all must have faced that problem at least once in our life. So you don't have to be sorry. We can yeah. continue, sir. Yeah. Let's have the next slide. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let me have the next slide.
Now, now what we basically do is, sorry, the, the previous one before this, good. Now, the, there are two studies that confirmed in uh, 2011, Professor Owosu, okay, yeah, here. Yeah. Now, training in manual small incision cataract surgery basically in Nigeria take place in the supportive supervision, you know, based surgeries when you are conducted during the residency training and then uh, rural postings too. As part of the, but it's mandatory in the college for you to, as a senior registrar, you have to go and spend three months in the rural postings. And usually your consultants go there to supervise you. And then most of the time, after acquiring some basic skills, at base, you now go there, spend three months, and then most residents are able to do supervised surgeries. Uh, usually the rural postings take place in centers of high volume uh, surgery, or otherwise you now you know, organize some outreach so that you pull in patients and your consultant come to support you. Now, apart from that, there are also a number of outreaches taking place, especially in Northern Nigeria. These outreaches are supported by NGOs like SciSavers International and residents who are, have already acquired some basic skills are given the opportunity to you know, attend these outreaches to be able to you know, fine tune their skills. There are also eye camps. But you know, the, the challenge with eye camps is, is one of you don't do the surgery and so the follow-ups are usually very poor. But for outreaches, which we encourage now, uh, you do the outreach and then you go back for follow-ups and usually when you leave the archery centers, you have a convict nurses there as a minimum who will be able to carry on with the follow-up. So outreaches are more encouraged than eye camps. But some eye camps are also happening. And then the quality of these outreaches are also being improved. Before now, biometrics are hardly done. But now biometrics are done in some selected outreaches. But we still have quite a number of outreaches that no biometrics are done. But generally, these are the, the best surgeries, rural postings, and outreaches are avenues for our residents to acquire skills in small decision cataract surgery. In fact, before now, just we, we, when we started residency training, we had to start with ECC, but our residents now don't do ECC at all. They just start with uh, outreaches, and so their skills for suture are uh, improved. Let me have the next slide. Next slide. Yeah, next slide. Next can slide. See, can you see it yeah. now? Yes, I, I can, I can. Now, this is just to portray the fact that in 2011, a study, a survey conducted among ophthalmologists, we have our own society, we call it the Ophthalmological Society of Nigeria. Professor Uwosu, you know, surveyed ophthalmologists in the technique that was popular as of 2011. And it confirmed that ECCE plus, you know, posterior chamber was the commonest cataract surgical technique. But in 2017, I was part of this paper. We also surveyed the same ophthalmologist and we found out that, you know, small incision cataract surgery is the commonest. So as we speak in Nigeria, the average ophthalmologist is able to perform manual small incision cataract surgery, albeit at varying uh, levels of skills. So I'll soon write up on next, next slide. Next slide. Let's have the next slide. Next slide. Can you see it? I have moved. maybe because of the connection issue. Yes. Yes. So I will soon round up. Now we still have a number of challenges. Uh, in terms of in terms of the, the major challenges are to do with inadequate surgical exposure. And this inadequate surgical exposure is related to the, the volume, the number of patients. Uh, you find out that in most of our tertiary institutions where training takes place, very few patients do cataract surgeries are taking place. Most of the cataract surgeries are taking place in secondary centers. While training are taking place, resident doctors are being trained in tertiary institutions. So this is a major challenge. Secondly, the issue of affordability. Majority of the patients, like Dr. Adamu of Zag in his uh, presentation, majority of the patients can't afford this charge. Talking about $100, for example, to, 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 you know, to afford cataract surgery. So the resident uh, doctors do not have enough uh, you know, uh, exposure surgically. 
And so most persons graduate as ophthalmologists, but they barely can perform, you know, you know, very, uh, you know, good cataract surgery, minor small is short cataract surgery with good outcomes. So it is still a challenge. Some residents after graduating had to go to other hospitals, spend one or two years, I mean, some months, to be able to improve their skills. Also the fact that our health insurance scheme as we speak is limited. Only the formal sector, people who are working with federal government, you know, can accept health insurance scheme. Cataract surgery is covered under the health insurance scheme. But very negligible population of Nigerians are working with government. And then, so majority have to pay out of pocket. And apart from that too, the issue of maldistribution of, of target personnel. So all these are added to the challenge because like in terms of the choice of site for cataract surgery, here we just choose to go temporarily uh, when uh, probably somebody had trabeculectomy. In temporarily supposed to manage some degree of astigmatism. We will need some training and retraining in that area so that we, our choice of you know locating our wound, whether superiorly or inferiorly, vis-a-vis -vis trying to, you know, uh, take care of astigmatism. This is not happening, you know, popularly in Nigeria. So these are all areas that we need. Uh, uh, I'm sure this collaboration will assist us in improving our skills. So I guess this is the last slide. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, thank you, Dr. Umar, uh, for that wonderful presentation. You have given us a very good idea about uh, the training and the challenges and your expectations from the organization. So uh, Dr. Uh, Sahu, sir, would you like to comment? We see a lot of opportunity and ISMSS is definitely going to help them in every way possible. So we will design a training program and we will see that uh, people are brought to India and trained properly or we can go there and train your people. And uh, one thing I'll be requesting, we don't know the, how the officials work there, how, the, how things are working. And Arthi will be your link person. All of you are interested in improving the cataract surgery in those parts of the country. So please contact and be in touch with them and we'll design a total program so that you become among the best eye surgeons. That will be our goal. Okay, we will back you all the way. Very much. Thank you. Thank you, Tau, sir, for that reassurance. Uh, Boramani, sir, would you like to uh, give us an idea about the Global SICS program, which we will be starting soon? So that uh, he has mentioned that they would like to know how to manage astigmatism, how to do trabeculectomy and a combined surgery uh, along with SICS. So, uh, Buramani sir, if you can give us the idea about the teaching program so that they can be hopeful for it. Yeah, Global SICS program is a well-designed program wherein it, is, it will be in a tutorial and video form and all ISM SICS members can have a free access to that program. And the talks will start from right from the basics of SICS to advanced SICS. So all the things like uh, SICS with trabeculectomy or astigmatism management, SICS with premium eye wells, all the talks will be covered by experts. And every month for the students, we'll have an interactive live session with the faculty. So the dates and everything will be announced. So where in the questions and answers will be discussed. So this is a fantastic program. Only thing is that there are about, say, 140 talks being prepared and this preparation is taking a lot of time because all the talks have to come to be the presentations have to be in one uniform format but i think within one month or maximum two months we will be ready with the program and we'll have a grand launch launching of the program across the globe and this will be very good for all the beginners as well as the experts in SSCS. thank you so, Dr. Umar, let me just remind you quickly that uh, I will request that your students, all of you all, should take the membership of the organization so that you can assess these programs. Uh, we have uh, kind of some uh, scheme going on for our non-Indian friends. Uh, so, I'll share the uh, details about, about that with you soon. 
so without further delay let me just invite dr buramani sir who needs no introduction let me just uh, tell you all that he was the first person to start the topical sics in the country uh, so over to you sir for your presentation yeah can you hear me yes sir we can hear you and you can see my slide also in the full screen mode isn't it yes sir yes sir yeah. good so let me so again good evening and good afternoon to all our friends and let us welcome all our office bearers of the nigerian and sierra leone country first of all let me thank dr arthi also for nicely coordinating because she is roping in one by one all the african countries and bringing them into the ismsic stream dr arthi has also your talk has to be a basic one so i have selected the basic talk on the principles of food constructions so i am sorry if uh, some of the you experts feel that it is a very basic uh, basic talk this is mainly meant for the pgs and those who are learning sscs so the sscs incision will have a trap door effect imagine two rubber balls uh, which are snugly fit into each other if there is a cut on the outer ball at one place and if there is another cut in the inner ball at another place naturally even if there is a connection between these two the inner part the internal part of the ball the inner ball acts as a wall and nothing is allowed to escape mm -hmm. escape out so this is the principle how the scleral tunnel wound is constructed so whenever your instruments are in or when the lens is going in the wound opens but when the instruments are not there again the wound closes on its own this is the principle of scleral tunnel there are various types of the incisions it can be uh, the external there is the external incision little away from the limbus then there is a scleral tunnel dissected and there is a internal incision these are the instruments which are used for uh, making the scleral tunnel you can have an initial groove using scalpel blade then the dissection of the tunnel with a crescent knife entry into the entry chamber using a keratin knife and you can have a side port with an mvr blade the incision can be a straight one or it can be a parallel to limbus or it can be in the opposite direction if the incision is parallel to the limbus definitely the ends of the incisions are closer to the limbus and there, there will be more gaping of the wound and this will induce more astigmatism if you make the incision a straight one the gaping will be comparatively less and the astigmatism induced will be less but if the incision is a reverse way the reverse curved way the gaping or the stretching of the outer and inner lip is less and astigmatism induced is comparatively less all of you are aware of the principle of incisional funnel the closer you are to the limbus you have to take a small incision but you can go away further away from the limbus and have a liberty of taking bigger and bigger incision because the induced astigmatism by all these incision will be same because for a larger incision you are going away from the optical axis the front incision is a curved most popular incision a curved incision designed by jack singer you have the liberty of extending the incisions in the periphery without inducing more astigmatism and the chevron incision is a inverted v shaped incision both the principles of both the incisions are same so initially you have a sclera grow on the sclera about 1.5 to 2 mm away from the limbus then start dissecting the sclera up and come up to the limbus so when you are doing this dissection please note the uh, direction of the blade it is kept parallel to the uh, curvature of the sclera but once you reach the limbus you know that the curvature changes the cornea goes little upwards so accordingly you have to do the dissection and you have to change the direction of the blade also and when you are about to enter the uh, entry chamber the blade has to be parallel to the iris so this way if you have a dissection you can have a perfect tunnel and you can prepare a very well internal corneal wall so this is a short video initial scleral grooming i have made a very small groove and that uh, i am doing a little extension with a crescent knife now when you are dissecting into the matter of uh, of the sclera the knife should be seen throughout the dissection in a semi transparent way this is to ensure that you are halfway in the scleral thickness you are not going very deep also and you are not going superficial also once you reach the limbus change the direction of this uh, dissection a little bit and then do about 1.5 mm dissection into the cornea 
डॉक्टर आरके हाउ मच टाइम आई वॉट सो वी कैन कंटिन्यू ठीक है आई स्कीप दिस वीडियो आई स्कीप दिस ऑल्सो Yeah, now there is another popular incision which has been popularized by Dr. Michael Blumenthal from Israel. This is the incision with scleral pocket. Some noise is coming from someone's microphone. Yeah. Now, in the Blumenthal's incision, he uses the anterior chamber maintainer. Anterior chamber maintainer is a small cannula which has been tangentially introduced into the anterior chamber. This is connected to the IV tubing to a bottle, the BSS bottle, which is kept approximately at a height of 60 centimeter. So this is a positive pressure technique wherein you are operating throughout the surgery with approximately 30 millimeters of mercury. It's a high pressure surgery, but this high pressure is in the entry chamber and which is pushing the seg posterior segment back. But you are working with a normal ar architecture and most of the times viscoelastics are not needed. The incision is a straight central one, which is about four millimeter horizontal. And then there are radial extensions. These radial extensions don't take part into astigmatism. You do the sclera dissection in a normal way, but in the Blumenthal's dissection, you have got extra additional dissection, which is called as the scleral pocket. So maybe for this additional dissection, you have to use the curved part of the crescent blade. The advantage of the scleral pocket is that you are doing the expression of the nucleus with the under the uh, pressure of the BSS coming from the entry chamber maintainer. So this BSS, you have to put some thin plastic glide, which is called a sheets glide, depress the posterior depth of the sclera, so that because of the hydrostatic pressure, the nucleus glides and gets trapped into the tunnel. So you have to, you have, to have this extra curved dissection here, so that the nucleus doesn't slip back. And so this is the advantage of making the scleral pocket. And then you can take out the nucleus, either full way or fragmented way. I skip these videos also because I'm going to show one more video. Yeah, this is a video of the Blumenthal technique. I'll show only the dissection part. Now here, instead of a straight center dissection, I'm making a total curve dissection. I generally prefer starting the dissection without making any uh, scleral groove that has got particular advantages, but when you can have an initial scleral groove and do the dissection, See to it that the blade is seen throughout the surgery in a semi-transparent way. Have an additional dissection on both the ends, uh, ends which is called as the scleral pockets. Then have one millimeter intracorneal dissection. Another advantage of AC maintainer is that even if there is bleeding through the tunnel, it cannot enter. Nothing can enter the entry chamber. Even our drug cannot enter entry chamber. The topical anesthetic cannot enter entry chamber. And there is continuous flow of fluid from inside out. Now the nucleus is already prolapsed here into the entry chamber through the side port. Now for the delivery, now after the nuclear prolapse, I open up the internal incision. This dissection also is a curvilinear parallel to the limbus. Do the cutting when you're going from outside in. Please note that the blood is not entering. There is bleeding throughout. Sheets glide has been placed and the nucleus is now trapped into the scleral tunnel. So this is the place where nucleus is trapped because of the scleral pockets. And then gently it is delivered out. If it gets stuck into the scleral tunnel, you can do the dissection of the nucleus or chipping of the nucleus with a sharp neural within the tunnel and take out the nucleus. Now, when you're doing the construction of the tunnels, you have to see to it that the dissection is done halfway in the sclera so that you have got a very good support here. So at least half thickness of the sclera should be remaining. If the dissection is too deep, the internal part of the sclera is very thin. It cannot support the wound properly. And then you get what is called as the scleral disinsertion. If the dissection is very superior, then sometimes you come out causing early and causing a scleral button holding. Now, this is a small video of scleral button holding. I'm starting the dissection from left to right and suddenly here a buttonhole has been created and the knife has come out. Now most of the times when the buttonhole is created for a beginner, he should abandon the incision and try to start a new dissection at a new place. But here what I have done, I have gone to the left side and again started creating a new tunnel under the buttonhole part. So there is a double tunnel. Now here I'm going into the deeper part and creating a new tunnel. So now I'm swiping the repository through the proper tunnel and this is the repository coming out of the scleral tunnel. So this way you can proceed for the surgery in case of a scleral button holding.
if you are going very deep, there will be premature entry and then lot of iris products will be there during the surgery. Now, this is a case. Suddenly, there is a premature entry here. The knife may be sharp and this is a premature entry here. So, throughout the surgery, there are the troublesome prolapse of the iris. Now, the nucleus is getting delayed, but again, along with the nucleus, some part of the iris has got prolapsed here. So, you have to keep repositing the iris or take the iris along with the IOL inside. Always use sharp instruments, otherwise sometimes you can tear off the testament membrane and necessarily you can cause a testament membrane detachment and lot of complications in the cornea. When you are doing the dissection of the pterodactyl, tunnel, it has to be kept in mind that the globe is pressurized either with the AC maintainer or with the viscoelastic so that in a stretched sclera, it is very easy to dissect the layers of the sclera than a hypotonous eye wherein the sclera becomes wavy and the dissection in a proper plane is very difficult. And always when you're going sideways, keep, keep in mind the curvature of the globes because this is a, a wrong way of dissecting. If your hand moves totally horizontally, your dissection is not along with the curvature of the, this is the wrong way the blade is moving. So the blade also should keep, your hand should keep pronating and supernating to some extent and you can have a dissection along with the sclera. I'll skip this part, this part also because this, this you can find in many books. If at all the wound is not a watertight, you have to suture the wound and there are various techniques by which the wound can be sutured. So have patience, have perseverance. There is always light at the other end of the tunnel. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. You've covered so many points in such a short time. And I really don't think that it was a basic, uh, basic talk. So if anybody has any question, you can unmute yourself and uh, ask. There is a question in the chat box, uh, which I see, which has been discussed. Uh, but uh, if you can discuss it further, sir, what of capsule that exists in a calcified capsule? This has been asked by Dr. Mustafa from Nigeria. So it was, uh, I think, related to the capsular excess. So, uh, Bharamani, sir, would you like to take that question? Yeah, the Dr. Ravindra also has answered Abhi, in the chat. Ravindra is showing a video. Uh, uh -huh. uh, Dr. Arti, can I just share a once 10-second sure, video? Sure, sure, sir. Yeah, the, this is, uh, uh, as I can introduce to you, that is a capsular uh, calcification. It's got a central, this is a small one. The principle is going to be the same. Uh, this capsule and adherent is adherent to the cortex and there's a bridge that goes across. So if I start here, then I'll be stuck with handling it right in the beginning. What I thought was, I'll, uh, now that's a uh, direct limbal tunnel which enters the sclera. There's no congenital flap. I filled with visco deep in the chamber. People dilates a little bit, tunnel floor entry so that the visco doesn't uh, uh, sleep. I'm going to enter there and I'm going to avoid this area. Do um, a rexis and which reaches here. Many times I have to stop here. I, it doesn't cut through. So, and that occasion here, it's cutting through and I could, you can see the, uh, so you can see on the, on the capsule itself, there is a, a tail like fibrotic ring. Unfortunately, I could cut it and then it goes around and then I could get a very nice uh, rexis in this. But what happens if I can't cross this? So I'll stop here, enlarge the tunnel to my comfort levels and cut this with Vanna scissors and then again go beyond it and do it. If the uh, rexis, if the uh, scar is a big scar occupying it, I'll try to go to peripheral, fold the scar itself and many times I can continue. I'll do rexis as much as it's possible and the balance amount I would use a Vanna's or micro uh, scissors, you know, the uh, scissors to cut it and uh, shape. You don't have to have a small rexis, you can have a big rexis in SICS. Big rexis is not a taboo in SICS, and you can go and do a big rexis, but actually doing a big rexis is more difficult because zonular apparatus, it tends to run to the periphery because of the peripheral slope towards the equator, 
always creating a big excess is uh, uh, difficult. But with the skills SICA surgeon has maintained, this again, I'm committed to put a lens. I could comfortably put a multifocal lens, sent it to the visual axis in this particular uh, patient. So uh, that's my, uh, you know, uh, small note on the calcification of anterior capsule. So thank you so much, sir, for showing that video. And it was really uh, quick of you to get that video for, like, let's say video answer for the question. Uh, uh, we have another question from Dr. Mohammed. Uh, I think, uh, Dr. Mohammed, you can unmute yourself and ask this question. Uh, he wants to know, should Rexis for all forms of cataract? So, um, yeah. um, hello, sir, Dr. Ravindra, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Yeah, you. I think you were question. You wanted to extend the question. Hello, I think. Uh, no, he is muted. there. Uh, Doctor Mohammed, you can ask you a question again, please. Internet issue. We we have some internet issues. Yeah. Doctor Mohammed, thanks for the question. Uh, Rexis Hello? is. He's trying to. Uh, yeah. If that is the question, no, no, like, did you get my question, sir? Yes. My, my question, sir. Should residents perform for all forms of cataracts? Isn't there room for um, 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 uh, linear capsulotomy or envelope capsulotomy? Yes. Uh, see, in, uh, the beauty of SICS is that they're compatible with any kind of rexis. Imagine you cannot, as I saw in the first video, I purposefully put that video. There was a runoff, but I could trim it and restart the rexis. And uh, that, that's the beauty of this thing. The, the why any rexis is all right, compatible, any kind of capsulotomy is compatible, linear caps, linear. I, I used to practice a capsulotomy where I make, I used to make a puncture, go to the adjacent, the adherent uh, capsule and join it to the puncture. So it's almost like, uh, I, I don't think I can pick up a video. I used to make an initial puncture go to the uh, adjacent uh, uh, intact capsule and make a puncture and join it to the adjacent like 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 that so you can get okay. a very good <coughs> okay. make a very large yeah. rexis that way and uh, ms ms yeah. is he is not asking that ah. he is asking whether it is necessary to do rexis in all cases i yeah. think they they are not doing regularly that is what i assume i may be wrong if they are not doing, they must try to do rexis because that is the best way to go. And then, uh, till we master this rexis, uh, then you can do this, uh, you know, small capsule they are doing. But uh, that, that I think uh, once you have seen these rexis being done regularly, it will be encourage you to go tilt your balance towards rexis, not stick with the whatever you are completely comfortable. Yes, okay. I think that that right, has, Sahu has answered it very adequately. Any kind of rexis is all right. It's not that you have to do a rexis. Uh, any kind of capsulotomy is fine for decisius, but the first preference is always for various reasons. I can enumerate them. Various reasons. Always learn and promote yourself to rexis in case you're not doing it. And uh, number two is okay. rexis keeps the lens well centered. There can be a decentered lens. Uh, especially when you're putting a high, premium lenses like a toric lens or a multifocal lens and even negative aspheric lens should be well centered to the corneal vertex or to the visual axis. This is only possible when you have done a good rexis. But in case you can't do a rexis, do any capsulotomy but try to put the lens within the capsular back. Even if you have done a linear capsulotomy or enveloped capsulotomy, see that the lens remains in the capsular back. The decentration is going to be much lesser. If you have put one haptic in the capsular bag, other haptic in the sulcus, then there'll be huge decentration of the lens. So that can be visually handicapping to the patient. Thank you very much, sir. So uh, any other comment or any other question from uh, any of you? Okay, um, uh, one more from me. Go on, yeah. sir. Um, this planned, um, um, I think this will be for Dr. J 
the planned um, global training for uh, um, the ISMICS is planning. Mm. The challenge, one of the challenges we do have in terms of training that uh, Dr. Umar um, raised, um, we, we will need to have a simulator to really uh, benefit from that um, global um, um, training. We need to have simulators really to, to see, really benefit from uh, uh, See, uh, we are having a webinar with uh, uh, HMS, uh, uh, help me see on 31st, 31st of uh, this month. Okay. So we will share that uh, thing with you. And we are planning, so globally we are trying to, uh, we are planning to extend that uh, facility all, all over, uh, starting okay. from India. So mm -hmm. we will just see how soon we can reach there. And mm -hmm. uh, after this thing, after this uh, talk also, we'll be discussing with the management uh, in HMS, and uh, they have a plan, and they have they have told me uh, how they want to go. But uh, after this thing, I will discuss in detail uh, how fast we can go. Thank you, Thank you very much. This Thank webinar much, will be only on simulator training. Okay. Yeah. All right, sir. Thank you, sir Boramani. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, uh, any other comment uh, before we close the session, sir? Yes. I, 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 I want to ask my Sierra Leonean um, 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 colleague, Dr. Is it Williams? Dr. Williams is there. John. John, Dr. John. Dr. John Martia is yes. also there. Yes, Dr. Williams is here. Good yeah. evening. Good evening. Please. Um, Good evening. Uh, I, I, I lost contact with uh, Dr. Uh, Matthew Jusuvandi. I think he's the chairman for uh, your, your, your country now. Yes, yes, yes he is. Yes. Can, can, can I, is he on, on here? He was present. I, okay. I, oh, it's all right. Then I, I, I saw his photo. I don't know whether he was present, but you projected his photo. I don't know. Uh, but he, anything, he sent me a can I get this afternoon that hello, he sent me a message this afternoon that he wasn't going to be present. Okay. Um, so he sent his apologies I, I, for that. Your, he has some urgent matters to attend to. Your link, how you, you get your 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 trip and blue from 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 India from Orolab from Orolab. You do one thing, RC, uh, RC, uh, please. Take note of their difficulties, yes, and uh, we will negotiate with the medical companies here and see how best they can be helped. Take all the all the difficulties they are facing regarding medicine supply, medicine instrument supply, and all everything, and then yes. we will we will become we will uh, between uh, we'll work between them and the company to facilitate this. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Hello. Hello. So now, yeah. Yes, Doctor John. Yes, permit me to greet my my uh, former classmate, DO classmate, Doctor Mutala uh, <laughs> Umar. Good to see. Good to I'm see pleased John. to see you. <laughs> yeah. I'm pleased to see you after after many many years since 2008. Yeah, eh? yeah. We trained between 2006 to 2008 in Nigeria. Yeah, happy to see you. <laughs> yeah, I think we can connect on Facebook after here. <laughs> <laughs> I see your, your beers are getting great now. Eh? <laughs> yeah, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> so, so I, I'm very happy that I was able to connect you. So Dr. Hello. John actually has been to Nigeria. He has done his residency from Ghana and that's where I met him. We wrote ICU exam together, I still remember. So I am very glad that we all were able to connect. And uh, Buramani sir, yes. I think we should talk um, academic group hey. uh, for all the countries together. Wherein we can have more academic discussions. Correct. Uh, Correct. Sure, sure. Yeah, so we will see what can be done for it. Okay. So, uh,
Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank yes. you. So let me thank just quickly you. give the vote of thanks before uh, we end this session. Yes, Dr. Ajit wants to wants to comment yes, yes. something. When when we are hunting friends uh, on hello. this forum, I would like to request. Do you know? My, I had three classmates uh, uh, in a Ames All India Institute of Medical Sciences. We had uh, uh, residents coming hello. from Nigeria and Tanzania. I had Dr. Nora. I don't know where is he. I've lost touch with him. Dr. Sangave is another doctor, and Dr. Ali Matanda. They were brilliant uh, Nigerian and uh, Tanzanian doctors who studied with me. I would be very glad if I could trace them somewhere. Sir, I will try to uh, help. I'll try to help sure, you to connect sure. to them. I will ask Dr. Achikbu if I'm not pronouncing it wrongly. She is vice chairman of the Nigeria chapter, and she has indicated that she wants to comment something. Sure. Over to you, doctor. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, this is a, a very interesting webinar, and I want to thank S ISMCIS for having us um, join this large family. Um, Dr. Damu and uh, Sierra Indian counterparts have all mentioned the challenges that we have and recommendations on um, how we can be helped. So um, I'm just thinking the global training it's, um, it's supposed to be an individualized thing. The trainees are supposed to join a webinar at the time of a training. Is that what it's supposed to be? No, no, uh, it's not like that. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Sabo, you want to come? No, 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 you carry on. Uh, it is not a webinar type. It is a particular tutorial. You have to complete the course in a stipulated time. You have to okay. join that as per your time schedule and go through all the course, answer the quiz after every talk or maybe after every section you have to answer the quiz accordingly the marking also will be done and then at the end of the month on particular dates you can interact with all the speakers so this way you have to complete the course and you'll get a certification also they, they have to be become members which yes. is free, free now for them yeah for you all membership also is free dr will give a link and once you are a member the course also is a free for six months we are keeping it free yeah, the membership is free till September end for non-Indian ophthalmists. Okay, that's great. Thank you very yeah. much. And um, we're going to um, be able to access the the link for membership. Dr. Arthi will put uh, it in a group. About and, hundred, hundreds of teachers, of, uh, very high standing teachers will be speaking on this platform. So you will have an advantage of knowing everything. Thank you. Okay, thank you and very much. Then, then we will work out some kind of training program and we'll think facilitate your students here and we may send doctors to train you there. So depends upon how you people respond to it. We'll plan out okay, something. That, yeah, that actually brings me to another question because I've been nursing this idea to have some sort of um, regional training yeah. place yeah. where can have people come around and then learn some sort of high volume place. I don't know right. if this is part of what you do. Um, yes, if you can. Plans are already there. Like yeah, Paraman. You know, plans are already there, but everything will start after the pandemic gets over. Sorry, say that again, please. Let the corona subside from everywhere. We'll have okay. all these physical trainings. Yeah, sure. Okay. But plans okay. are already there. Plans are already there. Okay. Okay then. Thank you very much. So, uh, Dr. Gu, I am very happy that I see another female in this webinar. And Dr. <laughs> Mahmoud, I actually complained to him that there is no female in your team and how is it possible? <laughs> and then, uh, I saw your name. So, I am grateful to you that you've spoken today. Uh, so, uh, and I'm, I reassure both the countries. Uh, Nigeria and Sierra Leone that it is going to be a great journey. It is going to help the further generation of ophthalmologists coming up uh, in uh, in the different part of the world. And I, I have recently joined Dr. Sahu sir and Dr. Buramani sir, but I am reassuring you that it's going to be a wonderful journey. So, oh, uh, great. And, yeah. <laughs> so I think we have reached uh, the end of our session and uh, we have exhausted the time as well, but it was a wonderful discussion. So I would li like to thank all the office bearers of Nigeria and Sierra Leone and uh, Team India as well. Dr. Sahu sir, Dr. Buramani sir, Dr. Parikshit sir, Dr. Satanshu Matu sir, Dr. Bhattacharya sir, Dr. Srinivas Joshi sir, 
and special thanks to dr ms ravindra sir for his wonderful teaching videos so i yeah. hope i hope we will meet uh, again soon on uh, uh, one of the webinars and i'm sure very soon we will meet physically as as well so you wanted to conclude with a female on the other side huh? that is that is very strategic <laughs> very, you just you just see the smile <laughs> on my face now <laughs> <laughs> Only okay. two females are seen, but are very strong. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. So, so we see. Uh, look for. Thank you, all of you. Huh? Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Good night, all of you. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Good night. La last but not the least, I would like to thank Team Entod for all the technical support. I am really sorry. Uh, I just forgot to mention that. Entered has been Mr. hosting Raman all our. Yes, Mr. Raman and team, thank you so much for being always with us. And Entered is a global player huh, from India, Indian multinational, and they have been hosting all our webinars. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So soon we'll have the installation ceremony of Tanzania uh, as well towards the month end. And uh, I would like to have one of the speakers from Nigeria and Sierra Leone as well. So we'll discuss on it more. Yeah, thank you for now. Okay, then. Right from my end. Yeah, thanks thank everyone. You. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye.